here. Welcome to a new Let's Play. This is Jack and Daxter, or the Jack and Daxter trilogy, rather. How excited I am for this. Jack and Daxter, one of my childhood games, one of my childhood memories, treasures, everything about this game, I honestly, I'm, I view it as a 10. Now we're going to get a choice here. Look at this. We got 100% on this file. We got 112% on that one. Wait, what? Did I 112% that? No way. All right. And then we're on Jack 3. So, yeah. Um, let's go to Jack 1. That's what let's probably going to be doing. I'm bloody excited. Oh, look. The sound effect's still there. That's fantastic. Oh, look at that. It's a loading screen. Which is not the same as the other one. Because I've obviously put, like, a slightly updated stuff. Of course. Why not? The old rendition of Daxter in, in his uh, in his HDified form. Um, it's uh, yeah, pretty awesome to be able to show you guys Jack and Daxter in a in a more modern graphics. I mean, like it's still the old stuff, but you get to see this kind of I don't know, like doing the HD remake. I think it's just the best of both worlds. We're gonna you know we're gonna get a full HD resolution. We're gonna get. Actually, no, let's look around this for a bit. We're going to get a full HD resolution. We're going to get, you know, like what Naughty Dog would have, you know, if they were on a PS3, this is what it would have looked like, you know, uh, for the most part. You know, obviously it would have been a bit more modernized and stuff like that. But this is, you know, an upscaling, a retexturing. And just look at the universe right now. Think about how much they evolved from Crash Bandicoot. That's the way of, that's the way I use to kind of judge this. Now, let's start a new game. We got 100% on that one. That was me getting my old trophy. And let's start a new game. And honestly, I am that emotional in terms of happiness right now. You just... I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I 
think we're in trouble! Do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was. Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go, Misty Island. That's right. And then. And Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man. Are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping because, in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there before I turn you both into ferns. All right, here we are in the Jack and Daxter universe. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. Damn, this is nostalgic shit. I actually played this game like last year, did the whole, you know, as I said, with a whole 100% completion. But every time I go back to Jack and Daxter, I get this nostalgic feel about it. And, I, and not only that, I get this just incredibly well designed. Like, there's just, there's, that, that's, it sounds like I'm, I'm beating, a, I'm gonna beat a dead horse throughout this LP. But it is, it, it is just, it is perfection of video game platforming. I, I, I honestly, I swear, look, look at it. Are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them, and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. I mean, okay, now this is the PS3 version, but think about it. The PS2 version wasn't that much worse than this, in terms, you know, it wasn't as upscaled, of course, uh, but but it was. It was basically, this is all Naughty Dog doing this. They got, you know, they got they got to deserve their credit, you know, where it's due. Um, and here we go, here's our power this cell. This is a power cell, the most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-grab zoomer. Yep. Um, here you go. Every time you get one, it does this, like, you know, music thing. It does this whole, you know, whatever you want to call it. And, um, all right. Continue, yep. Thank you. And yeah, so that basically there's this whole, you know, every time that you rescue it, you get this thing. Every time you die, there's like an animation. It's a very interactive kind of game. Um, 
but not in a bad way, you know what I mean? Like when you die, it's like, oh, sometimes I just want to die. And not every time they'll do like a thing, or they'll be like a different thing. The game's very heavy on its humor, uh, but at the same time, there is a story with, you know, real world implications or whatever. To break one of these boxes, you should jump in the air and then dive down onto it, hands first. Hey, That's me. You found no. one of my scout flies. I, I did. Seven all seven of them. Seven of them. For power cells, but the lurkers must have captured them all. Every single one of them. Um, what I like about it is it's like a natural evolution of the Crash Bandicoot series. That's the way I look at it. You look at Naughty Dog, they just they just finished Crash Team Racing and they thought, alright, we're going to the PS2 now. We need to do something big. And you know, wow. this this has similarities to Crash. I'm sure I could. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so, you know, you've got, like, you've got scout flies, which are the equivalent of, like, you know, uh, boxes in a way. You know, you've got to find, like, seven boxes in a level. But then you've got power-ups and stuff like Eco, which does some magical, awesome things. This kind of gives you, like, kind of makes you, like, Super Saiyan a little bit. Um, now can I go down? Yeah, i got to go down here. But look at the atmosphere of this game, and, and you tell me that this is, like, this doesn't look like a good game. I don't... There's a lot of people that just don't like Jack and Daxter for the mere fact that it's not Crash Bandicoot. And I think that, like, while I love Crash Bandicoot, I, I would almost say that I prefer Jack and Daxter, at least Jack 1, compared to, like, Crash 1, that's for sure. Um, just because, look, look at the scope of the world. They went from linear, you know, 3D levels, which are great, great, and full of personality. I love them. I'm not saying I don't like them in Crash. But they went from that to a fully open world, yet still platformer-driven and gameplay-driven uh, game. It's not just like a cutscene, you know, fucking hog. You know, they don't just do that every five seconds. There's an atmosphere to it. There's there's an energy to this game that you know. I, 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 I just think it's it's perfection. You know what I mean? Like I, I think it is genuine perfection of a video game. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling blue eco through your body. Graphically, it can't. Be, it pretty much almost wasn't beat in the entire system. And this game was released in 19. Uh, sorry, no, not 19. No, That's definitely a blue not. Eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters. This vent will give you a full charge of blue eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. That it does. Um. You know, we've got, we've got, uh, yeah, graphically for its time, I think it was 19, I think it was, no, sorry, 2001 that this was released. Um, 2001, you think about that, so, I mean, pretty, pretty damn good. Do you know what I mean? For 2001, obviously, again, we are looking at a PS3 version, but if you want any proof, you know, just, just have a look at the PS2, go take out your copy, and, you know, really, it is the same graphics as, you know, again, just upscaled and customized, like, I know, like, look at the, look at the variation in, in environment, um, and also, just in general, a shitload of callbacks and, re and, and similarities to Crash Bandicoot. On the ground are a type of eco. Pick up 50 small green ecos, or one big green one to increase your health. Okay. Alright. Green eco, that's important, of course, that's your health, as you just said. And, uh, uh 42. Great stuff, great stuff. Alright. Where the... Now, it's interesting how they use these things here, right? Yeah, double jump. There you go. Geezer rock. Geyser rock, whatever. Geezer, old geezer. That's why I, why I look at it. I'm just trying to look. Hopefully, this looks pretty good on the system, you reckon? Yeah. All right, that's good. I'm just wondering if, if it's maybe put a bit more uh, exposure onto the graphic, but yeah, that's okay. That's all good. Um, nice and colourful game, isn't it? Now, did we get everything, though? Let's have a look. Yep, we did. Look at that. Everything. But yeah, so overall, geezer rock, geyser rock, what do you want to call it? I like calling it both. Fantastic level. Um, you know, like, fantastic intro. You know I mean? It's not, sorry, it's not really a fantastic level, but if you're into that kind of, you know, a good tutorial that isn't a pain in the ass, that kind of has a, has a feel for it and kind of gets you into the game, great stuff. This is going to be very... This LP is going to be filled with praise. Um, and we've got, I'm going to definitely have one of my good friends, Johnny Natrim, along for the ride for, uh, uh, you know, a bit of it as well, or, you know, depending on how much I can record it, a lot maybe, because uh, he is incredibly passionate about this game as well, 
and uh, you know, unlike the Rugrats uh, LP, you know, this is going to be we're going to be fucking on focus. Like this is going to be serious. So here's all the different places we can see. So you can't do it right now, but usually you can warp to different huts. So we got to go to the Green Sage's hut. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! What a condescending bastard. Alright, so the way that this is going to be set out is, uh, part-wise, it's going to be confusing because we're going to, like, right now, if you look at it, we're in Sandover Village. So the question is, like, is that a separate part? Is that a separate level? And I reckon I'm, for the most part, I'm going to be able to try and name through like level per level basis. But of course, there's going to be some stuff that we're going to have to. Yeah, you'll see. Um, this is Sandover Village. I will continue this on in the next part. Very, very excited to do this. Uh, let's just try. I'll just try and uh, wait a minute. I'll try and get a good shot of this. Wait. No, oh, it's not gonna. I want to get a good shot of the uh, the hut. These two couldn't have oh, their ears. there's Kira down there. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I shall see you in part two. This is gonna be a fantastic let's play. Hope you stick around.